Um, my co-authors are Milton and June, and this is an update on the status and management of the Caribbean spine lobster fisheries in the CARICOM region. So as the background, um, the spine lobster fishery is one of the most commercially important fisheries in the region. And in 2011, a baseline review was completed on the status and management of the fishery. Um, this review in 2011 identified a number of critical steps that needed to be taken towards ensuring the long-term sustainability of the fisheries, the spine lobster fishery sites. And these steps included improved data collection and regional standardization of data types, harmonized regulations at the sub-regional level, review and reform of governance systems at the local, national, and sub-regional levels, and also assessment and control of the illegal lobster fishery. So the methodology involved a review of the regional management and governance efforts, and landing trends, export volumes, and mon monetary values. So some of the preliminary results um, I'm going to share now. So since 2011, um, some of the efforts in terms of governance and management of this fishery included the preparation of the St. George's Declaration on Spiny Lobster and Spiny Lobster Conservation and Management in 2015. And the goal of this declaration is to ensure the long-term sustainable use of the resource through effective implementation of conservation and management measures for stocks, for the stocks and their habitats based on the best scientific evidence available. And a guide was prepared to implement this declaration in 2017. And it serves both management and educational purposes. And it highlights the themes covered in each article of the declaration. Another regional effort um, is the joint, the um, OSPESCA, WCAF, CCA, RFM, CFMC joint working group for spiny lobster. And this last met in 2018. And coming out of this group, there was a recommendation that was approved by the 18th session of WCAF C on the management of Caribbean spiny lobster. And this included um, steps like implementing the SAP in the CLME plus region, uh, having common assessment methodologies for stock assessment throughout the region, implementing a regional management plan similar to the Ospesca region, and also developing catch documentation schemes to improve traceability and reduce IU fishing within the fishery. Another um, regional governance effort and tool that countries can use to address IU fishing, um, especially for the lobster fishery, is the regional plan of action to prevent and deter and eliminate IU fishing. And this has a number of measures covering policy and legal frameworks, uh, monitoring, control, and surveillance, uh, also regional cooperation and information sharing, and capacity development that countries can use this to guide their um, I, um, how they address IU fishing for and for the spine lobster fishery. In terms of production, from 2000 to 2021, there has been some fluctuation. Um, peak production occurred in 20, 2003, and that was around 12,000 tons in live weight. And um, in 2021, production was 80, around 8,500 tons. In terms of lobster commodity export volumes and values for CRPM member states, also for this time period, it fluctuated between 3.8 million tons in product weight and um, 72 million tons. And this 72 million tons, this was in 2021, and this was a huge increase, which also represented a huge increase in, um, sorry, that was the values I was quoting from 200 tons to 1,600 tons within this period was fluctuation. Um, and then this value accounted between for 3.8 million, from 3.8 million US dollars to 72 million US dollars. And the peak production occurred in 2021. And this was a very high value and was due to the increased demand um, at the international level 
especially when markets were opening up after COVID-19. Okay. Some of the markets included, um, so the regional markets were Barbados, Guyana, Jamaica, St. Lucia for exports. And um, the markets also for international range from Armenia, Africa, well, Europe, Africa, um, mostly Europe, Africa, and North America, and United Kingdom as well. Um, products range, there are various product types. Um, lobsters not excluded elsewhere um and the product types were not very specific and the, these data i should say come from the fish stat um database and there were a mix of categories but based on the countries exporting the assumption is that it is mainly spine, spiny lobster which is piny leaders argus from our countries okay so in terms of future work, um, there are some gaps for improving management, and these include improving catch and effort and biological data collection, improving collection analysis of trade and commodity data, because it is a very viable fishery, um, improving regional traceability standards, regional collaboration regarding IAU fishing, um, having clear reporting procedures, um, such as tail versus um, tail versus whole weight and the exact product type, as well as updating stock assessments. In terms of opportunities for improving management, um, countries are encouraged to continue implementing the CLME Plus SAP. Um, countries are also encouraged to continue collaborating through the joint working group on spiny lobster and that collaborations between OSPESCA, WCAFC, CRFM, and CFMC. Also, there's the Regional Working Group on Illegal, Unreported, and Unregulated Fishing, and CRFM is the convener of this working group. Um, we also have the CRFM Fisheries and Aquaculture Priority Commodity Working Group, and this um, would be a good, the spiny lobster fishery would be a good fishery for this group to consider as well. And then we also have, um, we're piloting a fisheries management cloud database to help countries um, improve their data collection. So these are some opportunities for improving management in the fishery. And um, so that's my presentation. Thank you very much. All right, and thank you too. Wonderful, thank you. All right, I see a hand went up right away from Gavin Bellamy, Dr. Bellamy from Jamaica. Go ahead with your question, sir, or comment. Good morning. Um, thank you for that presentation. Just curious, there was this significant increase in 2021. Um, did you look at the reason and where this increase came from, like countries? What, what caused such a significant decrease year over year? That's my first question. Thanks. Hi, yes. So in terms of production overall, there was not a huge increase in production, but there was a huge increase in exports. And there were um, just about four countries that were responsible for this increase. Um, so yes, I did look at that. And I think it's based on existing markets that they would have had that um, came back really strong after COVID, especially um, tourist markets. And it's mainly for countries that were responsible for this increase in exports. But the production in overall at the country level, there was not a huge increase. Okay. You can see those four countries, so curious. Yes. So it was Bahamas, Jamaica, Belize, and Haiti. I see um, Milton Houghton has raised his hand. Go ahead, Sir Houghton. One other thing that I want to point out is the fact that uh, lobster like some other species, uh, they vary. The, 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 the abundance, stock abundance, vary from year to year. And, and, and the variations are quite uh, significant. And um, some of the data sets that you will see regarding lobster uh, population and, and even catches, you know, they relate to like a five-year uh, cycle. And I know um, sometimes 
uh, when you're just looking at the short term, it's hard to, to know exactly where you are in that cycle. Sometimes when we're on the low side, we you know hear an alarm about um, stocks uh, collapsing and so on. <laughs> Um, and then shortly after that, you will have, uh, you know, a peak <laughs> uh, in, in abundance. But, you know, that's just a part of the natural um, psych cyclical variation of, of um, spinal opsa, which has been well documented, not only in the region, but uh, internationally too, like in Australia, you see that same peak and trough, peak and trough. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's uh, important always when we're looking at the data and trying to interpret the long-term um, data and the short-term data to understand this phenomenon. Thanks. All right. Thank you so much for that contribution, Mr. Hart. And thank you for the very concise and uh, informative presentation.